Emergencies and epidemics have some commonalities with war and combat operations. During the Ebola outbreak in West Africa in 2014, we saw how military contingents of three countries fought the epidemic and was eventually quickly contained and stopped dead on its tracks. In January of 2020, the global pandemic of COVID-19 impacted the world and the Philippines. Again, we see former generals at the helm of the Interagency Task Force for Emerging Infectious Diseases take the lead in the country's fight against the epidemic. For this episode, we will tackle and discuss the incident command system and how combat operations are utilized in disaster medicine and pandemics like our current situation. This is your host, Dr. Teddy Herbosa, and welcome to Health Issues at TVUP. Our guest for this episode is a graduate of the Philippine Military Academy and is a Marine who I would call as the true frontliners in combat operations. However, today our guest is assigned as the action officer of the National Incident Command Emergency Operations Center. Let's all welcome uh, Lieutenant Clifford Basco. Clifford? Good morning, sir, uh, and good uh, good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon to everybody, uh, to all those listening and to all those watching uh, during this fine afternoon. Good afternoon, Lieutenant Colonel Clifford. Uh, let's discuss about uh, your experiences as a Marine. Uh, have you ever been in an um, enhanced community quarantine-like situation, like uh, what we're trying to do this time? There have been uh, instances, sir, where I have been in uh, enhanced, uh, you can call it enhanced community quarantine. The one uh, most recent I can think of is uh, during combat operations that we were doing in New Province. This was the year, a decade ago, 2010. And um, as you know, the situations on the ground during encounter terrorism or military operations is that it changes, the, the enemy adapts to what you're doing. So we were running operations and then the enemy, the Abu Tayyaf group and the other insurgents changed their tactics to economic sabotage. So what they did was they started blowing up bridges all over the province of Sulu uh, to stop our military operations. And so Effectively, it became a quarantine, not only for us, but for the other, other citizens all over the province who couldn't bring their, their produce to the market. They couldn't move yes. also for fear of, uh, because of the fear of all these uh, terrorists and uh, armed uh, people moving around. And so it was the same, maybe in a, lit, in a very small scale, the same to what we were doing now. And then Correct. the danger was, uh, of course, it's different, the uh, armed terrorists, but the community quarantine was uh, imposed involuntarily. Uh, it's the same as Correct. now, but uh, back then the, the, the threat was more of uh, armed, armed people and uh, uh, terrorists. Correct. Correct. It's so it's very so similar, it's the same. Lieutenant Colonel. Correct. Very similar and very the same. The enemy at that time is insurgents, but today it's biosecurity. It's a, it's a virus that we are fighting. and uh, the, the principles are the same. We quarantine for safety and protect the community so that the infection will not happen. So, yes, sir. It's uh, the same. So then, and then Colonel Clifford, can you explain to me what an uh, incident command system is? Okay. So, what... An incident command system, this is the, the organization or the approach that we take if we want to do coordinated response uh, and to respond to certain emergencies such as this pandemic. So what an incident command system or uh, an incident command system does, it, it, it becomes the focal point for managing all these activities that we want to do. Uh, emergency operation center are set up. This is the hub of the incident command system, and they are designed to facilitate critical activities uh, for the mission in, in the military, critical activities for the mission, such as the command and control system. 
the command con and control system is how you how you set up infrastructure and communications to be able to give instructions to those on the ground who are actually doing the fighting for you or in this case who are actually who are actually uh, battling the virus in the hospitals in the street and doing the quarantines so the emergency operations uh, center is staffed by other agencies uh, in our case because it's at the national level it's staffed by national government agencies regional and uh, non-government organizations uh, but for us it's the it's the TILG, the SWD, DOT, name every government organization and it's probably in our emergency operations center right now. So, so it's the this organizational framework. Right? Yeah, so it's the organizational framework that the uh, whole of government uses to be able to implement a mission. Like for example, uh, stop the spread or transmission of COVID-19 which is our main mission. And we use all the different agencies in government to be able to uh, coordinate our efforts, right? To coordinate and to command and be able to develop. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so the, uh, the Emergency Operations Center, where we are right now, the National Incident Command, becomes the central location for information gathering also. So all these uh, government agencies collect, collecting data, bring it up to us, we analyze it, it's also a center for disaster analysis, and this is where we coordinate our responses. So in normal times, you have government agencies who work within their silos, within their own mandate. So the role, the biggest role of the emergency operations center is to bring all these government agencies together, pull all the resources, and then coordinate and plan a response so that we will be acting as one and not not uh, in uh, uncoordinated manner or in scattered scattered uh, responses to this uh, crisis so can you tell me what what is the so that's the role of the emergency <laughs> operation center but there is usually what is called the incident commander so in this particular case, our boss is Secretary Galvez, right? And Secretary of National Defense, Secretary of National Defense, Secretary Año. So uh, what is the role of the incident commanders? So sir, the, for this uh, epidemic or for any incident, the role of the incident commander is usually summarized into two. First, he has to be the one to collect and provide updated and real-time information and provide the strategic or, or the operational plan to be able to execute what our strategic leaders think of doing or have laid out the strategy for us. So first, Correct. he's the one who evaluates the available information, uh, assess all incoming, all outgoing, determine if this information is accurate and act based on the best available information that's available. He also is the one who gathers up the team. So he was the one responsible for hiring uh, mm -hmm. or gathering you and asking you to volunteer, sir. Thank you very yes, much sir. for your service. Thank you. And uh, he's the one who makes sure the team members need to work together within that system, the incident command system. We need to work as a team because this is vital. It is vital for us for clear communications and for his decision making. Because ultimately, right. our job is to make sure that he, he uh, comes up with the best available decision that we can implement on the ground. And it's also his job to develop an operational plan, which we have been doing, sir, uh, for the past few days. And uh, right now, the decision has been made at the strategic level from the IATF for the next few days. And again, our job is to come up with the operational plan to be able to execute this. So it's, it's, it's the job of our boss. Uh, and so that's also one of his job. And uh, basically he's the one who also sets up what we call in the military as the battle rhythm. It's, uh, it's the schedule or the operational tempo. He tells us to when to go slow or when to speed up our effort. So he's the one who- He's like the conductor of the orchestra. 
that, right? He's like the conductor of the Technically, orchestra. Sir, precisely. 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 Correct. He's the one who determines that these tasks are critical, so we need to speed up on this, and uh, these tasks are not needed, so or they are at the the lowest level of uh, importance. So Priority, he yes. makes sure that we do not drift into into solutions or lose our focus on the goal. Correct. And so it's the, the incident, incident commander. So it's the incident commander yes, that uh, gives leadership leadership to the whole mechanism of the command system. Uh, what are the theoretical uh, components of the incident command system? And then what are the ones that we're actually using? Our task group that you created in the national task force. Yes, sir. So theoretically, for an incident command system to work, of course, you would have the command system, which is the yes. what authority are you working on? So this is given to us by the national uh, authority, which is our president, and then uh, to the uh, interagency inter task force, uh, and then to the national task force, which he then delegates to the chief implementer as the incident commander for this Correct. pandemic. So you, we need to have the command. You need to have that authority to do what he does. And then we need uh, the incident command system also have sections like a planning section. Planning, we need to have yes. Planning section, yes, sir. Which is uh, for our for our uh, purpose is the operational planning group, mm -hmm. uh, which is composed of the planning team that we have seen at the NIC. And then we have an operational operations section, which is now the operations. one that uh, execute. That this is what we call in the military as our main effort. This is the one main who effort. responds to this pandemic. Yes, sir. Planning, so operations, in our, and then in our structure, in our structure uh, this is the task group on response operations. Correct for the for the national task force, and then. For the response operation or the operations uh, section to respond, he has to be supported. It has to be supported. It has to have logistics, logistics, finance, supply. Uh, administration support, human resources. resources support. Yes, sir. Supplies, human resources. Yes, sir. So they have. He, in order for him to do his job in the response, he doesn't. The ideal thing is he doesn't have to think about these things. Somebody provides it for him, plans it for him, all the support that he needs, that that group needs. So it's a logistics section or a resource management section or or finance or administration section. So basically those are the, the components that you ideally have in an incident command system. That's a very basic. Oh, you, you, you need yeah. So you need command. You need uh, uh, oper uh, planning, operations, logistics, finance, and administrative support. So that creates the whole gamut, yes, and yes. Uh, you can expand it. You can contract it, right? Depending on what you need. Can you just describe how it's like here at the National Incident Command? Who are the agencies of government that are currently operating? in the uh, emergency operation center. Yes, sir. So for our National Incident Command Emergency Operation Center, of course, we have our boss, the chief implementer, the Secretary Galvez. We also have the deputy or the deputy and the chief of the secretariat, Iutec Purisima. And then, of course, within that executive committee group of the NIC EOC are advisors who are very critical mm -hmm. at uh, what we are doing, like you and uh, uh, Dr. Tony Liachon and Dr. Bueno right. and other right. advisors within the system of leadership in the command. We call it the command section. Then we have four task groups. Yes. Four task groups under the NIC EOP, which is uh, task group response operations, headed by the Secretary of Health, Secretary Duque, mm -hmm. uh, with the DILG as uh, a uh, secretariat. Then yes. we have the task group on resource management and logistics headed by DSWD Secretary Bautista and the OCD as a secretariat. We have task group Stratcom headed now, headed recently by just this morning by Secretary Roque 
the presidential spokesperson. And the, we, the secretariat is the PCOO uh, under UTEC Capacidne. Then we have the task group on food security headed by the DA secretary, Secretary Dark. So within those task groups are numerous sub task groups that also do specific things. For example, the task group on response under him are the sub task groups on health, which deals with the health response for this crisis. Then we have the task group on peace and order, which is led by the PNP and all other uniformed services. Task group on repatriation, these are the sub task group that takes care of the overseas Philippine workers and other overseas Filipinos returning. And they also uh, plan on the return to their home provinces of locally stranded individuals. These are the ones who have been caught up during the ECQ in Manila or in other provinces. And then we have the sub task group in mitigation, which is uh, led by the DSWD, and these are the ones that provide the SAP and other social amelioration programs. So how all these agencies, these are all big agencies, and how do they relate to each other? So as we mentioned, when we operate, we have the task group response as the main effort. So once a strategic plan has been set up or given to us by the IATF, we now create our own operational plans created by the planning group, which is under the command section. And then these are now cascaded to the task, different task groups to implement. So these are now implemented by the different task groups through their own agency. And uh, this is the operational level, or ito yung, uh, this is a step below the strategic level. And, but who are the specific entities that implement this? These are now the regional task forces uh, down below, composed of the 17 regions that we have all over the country. So these are the uh, led by the OCD and all other regional directors that are in the disaster risk and redu reduction management system or uh -huh. the incident yeah. command system that is already set up in place. So what they do is they follow up on the local government units, the municipal or provincial social welfare offices, or the local offices of these agencies who are now the ones on the ground who are now the ones executing what we want done. So once uh, this is done, they now report back to us, back to the NIC or to, the, to their different task groups, when then the task groups then report to the National Incident Command, to the command section under Secretary Galvez, who then reports back to the National Task Force, task force. and of course to the President on what is happening. So it's a very organized system, and it also is insinuated into our NDRRMC framework, which is our disaster framework, right? So it uh, yes. was overlaid on that. The yeah, whole sure. system was overlaid on that using existing government agencies, the SWD, the ILG, the OH, uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Office of Civil Defense, etc. So it's a whole of government who how how different is this pandemic yes, approach sir. to combat operations you have experienced is it any different or is it the same is it uh, what are the differences so uh yeah. yeah what we have been talking about for a few minutes are the the similarities to to preparing for combat but there are also differences i think the foremost of which i can think of is the nature of the adversary because yes. the virus it, it's a virus it presents a consistent threat it presents a consistent trend we know is the threat but we also have strategies to unmask it so mm -hmm. what i'm saying is that once we unmask it and we consistently and thoroughly do our implement our strategies this virus can be defeated for us in in war or in in, in enemies that we have, they adapt to our methods. Of course, I don't. Uh, I've been reading also that the virus also adapts. But uh, yes, yeah, in war, whatever you do, in war planning, whatever you do affects the enemy. So the enemy adapts consistently. Consistently also adapts to the to the 
operations or strategies, operation plans that you are implementing. For example, uh, we were talking about the the my ECQ in the province of Sulu. So that was something where we we thought we were on the on the right side or on the right path because one of the main strategies we implemented then was one of the very good commanders that I worked with set out a strategy to support development in the province mm -hmm. with the simple motto that where the road ends, insurgency begins. Correct, correct. So that's, that's right. the one that uh, the motto, where the road ends, the insurgency begins. So what we did was like lay out all these development projects, road projects throughout the whole island so that you, have, you can have farmers bringing all their produce to the market. So the Correct. enemy also adopted, and of course we do not want development. If the road now leads to our to the to the hinterlands Market. where we have our yeah. supporters, this will this will make us to support us. And now they started bombing bridges, harassing Correct. construction workers. So we adapted to that. So those are one of the examples that I can take up wherein this is uh, pandemic is uh, different to our operation. Well, actually, it's not very different because it's the same thing. When the uh, yeah. virus infects people and they're brought to the hospital, they infect the doctors and the nurses. And then we're also killed by the, we're also affected by this virus. So in a way, it's actually very similar in analogy. Uh, yes. Now, what are the difficulties in terms of coordination, collaboration? Because not all agencies are attuned to an incident command system. I mean, disaster medicine. We apply this for disasters, but agencies like uh, the other agencies, local government, they're very political. Uh, the SWD, it talks about social, social amelioration. Uh, how, how difficult it is to consolidate all of these efforts into one uh, unified uh, command? It is, uh, it is quite difficult, sir, at first, of course, the first the first few weeks or the first few days are the most difficult and there are some issues that we need immediately to solve and we have to identify them immediately when we set up an interagency emergency operations center such as the one that we set up so it of course uh, you know sir that it wasn't running smoothly immediately we had very very uh, some bumps along the way and so some of the factors of this is first, the foremost, uh, really one of the foremost obstacles is communication, transparent communication. Because Correct. first, these agencies, yes sir, these agencies have their own reporting system, have their own uh -huh. way of, of uh, collecting and disseminating information. And now, because information, we say information of, is power, there is that reluctance to share it especially yes. in uh, to other agencies that you think you might you don't need this so that's one of the most uh, the first obstacle we have in setting up an interagency operations center uh, transparent communication then so tr trust trust breaking with other agencies yeah. trust of the that information can be shared freely and openly to uh, different organizations correct so that that's hard to begin yes, sir, with yes, trust sir. Yeah. Um, Yes. So, so yes, can you sir. describe to me and your then, job uh, as action officer? You're an action officer. Isn't that exactly what the action officer does? He tries to gather all the information yes, from all different areas and make sure yes, that sir. the command group is able to uh, analyze and see all of this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So we, when we set this up, we also recognize that the chief implementer or the command section has to have information that is already, uh, how do you call this, collaborated or synthesized. He doesn't want curated, information curated. from uh -huh. one agency or one task group or another. Yes, sir, that's not coordinated with each task group. So there has to be somebody has to, who has to be doing this, who has to make sure that when these task groups are doing their stuff, it's they're not working within, within silos. They're not going back to working within their own mandate, but they're working to pursue or to achieve the objective of the chief implementer. 
So that's our job, sir, to make sure that all these efforts are in sync, to make sure that the information that are be that is it's being received is the one that's also, that really the implementer needs for his decision making, and that is already processed within uh, all these systems, all these task groups that uh, that we have set up, and it is all aligned to the mission or to the goal that the chief implementer has set out for us. So that's basically, sir, my uh, main job. And, and uh, another one is also to, so to make sure that the administrative setup within the NIC is, is, uh, has been set up so that, of course, these agencies or these, these uh, representatives of the agencies will come in and work within a system that is already set up. Because uh, if, if the administrative, for example, uh, uh, the, the EOC is not set up in a manner that they will be successful, then uh, you don't expect them to, to work as well as a team. So do you have issues and concerns other than what we have already discussed and more issues and concerns about uh, incident commandism and uniform services working side by side with the civilian agencies and civilian employees? Uh, what, what I think the some might not understand, sir, is that as a military, in the military, we have always been working interagency. So if yes. we go into a particular area, it's always that we, we realized early on during the early day of our career that if you want to be successful in doing your mission, you have to know or you have to learn to collaborate with different agencies at that level you are in. So it's, if we are still a young, young lieutenant, it would be at the level of the municipal or provincial uh, LGUs yes. and NGAs or NGOs that are already in the area. So uh, for us, there is really, it, it's really, I could say that we are in co very comfortable in doing this uh, from the past, mm -hmm. past uh, experiences that we've had. Uh, other agencies might not. We have seen a lot of... Uh, friction like that but uh, yes. just to set them into them where they will be successful and then they recognize that we're not actually in your way we're trying actually trying to help you do your job more efficiently and to coordinate with other agencies so yes sir that's it so that's it and and i think the key concept here is really the issue on communication i think uh uh, how do you how do you solve the problem of uh, making sure that all the different cogs in the wheel, all the different elements in the system, are communicating with each other so that everyone will uh, follow the playbook or the strategy or the tactics that uh, are being deployed? What are the yes, secrets sir. in uh, communications? <laughs> yes, sir. There we have what we call the cheat sheets how to uh -huh. do it one is uh, we make a template and make the make them work through that template because uh, ideally we would we would allocate like in not in emergency situations we would allocate time for you know for for different members of the task group to know each other to right. get to know each other better before they work but in this you know that when we came in we were we had to hit the ground running because the crisis was running away from us so we had to work together. So the best, the one of the things that we had to do was set out a template in, in how to do things and that template was set out in a way that they had to coordinate and collaborate with each other. And then we set up physical spaces in a way that they also need to collaborate and coordinate with each other. Uh, and uh, of course, the good thing also is uh, it wasn't that difficult in this crisis because it's also the key also are the communicators that the agencies are sending. Okay. The one that's in charge of, for example, the whole DSWD, the whole DILG, these were like, they were sending under secretary, assistant secretaries who were really, really very good experience. at experience. Yeah, well. they were experienced about the agency, yeah. how the agency operates, yeah. and they had command as well. They actually had the uh, authority yes, to make their agency move. 
that's wonderful. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. Yes, that's very uh, correct. It's been a pleasure, Clifford, for you to explain the incident command system to our viewers of TVUT. Uh, any final words about how everybody should be helping the government and the whole of government fight our pandemic, COVID-19? Yes, sir. So this fight is uh, is all about everybody. It's uh, everybody's fight. It's not just a uh, whole of government, not just us in the government, but it's a whole of society fight for, for everybody. Uh, we have laid out the minimum health standards that, have be, that we need to do to be able to really, really uh, win this fight that we are in. And everybody's cooperation is needed. Everybody's cooperation is needed. And uh, just think that if we can do this together, if we can work together, we can really defeat uh, this un invisible enemy that we are fighting right now. And also, it's been a very, very good pleasure to be working with you, sir. But, uh, it's not yet over. We have to get back to work after this. But it's really, really, I, I'm very, it's my pleasure to have met somebody at, uh, with your expertise and with the knowledge that you have. And I'm actually learning every, every time that we are, uh, we meet or we talk everything, every time. I'm learning something new every day. Thank you very much also for Thank TV. Thank you very much. And I'm, I've also seen you work very hard as the action officer at, and uh, taking notes in minutes of 12-hour uh, long meetings. And I'm also impressed at your dedication to your work and to your duty. And with that, I think I'd like to thank you very much for your service to our country and service to our people. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight for the pandemic is a very complex one. It is very similar to war and combat. The incident command system has been our very important uh, tool to make sure that the goal and the mission of taking over and containing the virus is there. Thank you very much, everyone. This is Dr. Teddy Herbosa, your host for health issues at TVUP.